Ali. This is Excellent Men Engendered Spaces, a one shot by Michael Lucifer with a cover by Mark Stanley Lee. Before I start, this is pretty good, but it can be a bit confusing because they later did a storyline with the same title as this one shot, Engendered Spaces. Uh, it was a story about the Smurf. It was quite good as well. But this came first. And other than the ongoing arc of the mutie population dwindling, there's not really a link beyond the name to that other story. Although I think it might have been the same writer as well. The required backstory is that, like most comics... Mike O'Brien Benson ruined things. Now here is a great picture of an odd lineup configuration of the excellent men. But mainly, look, it is Emma Frosties looking perfect as always. Hashtag marry me please. Our thing here is that a mutie boy has died, and it's at the point where there are so few muties in the world that even a single death, it is just shy of 1% of the entire mutie population. Also, Emma Frosties is the best dressed. I would gander every funeral if she was there. So we have like a compilation of little character moments at this funeral. Retrograde and X-32 and then there's like one action scene in the whole thing and even that it is pretty tame action. Uh, Emma Frosty's though, she's the best thing ever. I have never kissed a comic before but I am tempted every time I see her face. But the problem is she cannot give consent so I never do kiss her. Wolfman, he is gunning through some things about his own immortality and how he will outlive all his friends. Elsewhere, Dr. X, he detects an odd man in attendance who is thinking about the bondage club and then suddenly starts using a psychic scrambler to keep Dr. X out. Uh, then we have got stuff telling us why... All the excellent men came to this funeral. Uh, some more Emma Frosties. And this is when she was with Cyclist, which remains one of the best comic book couples of all time. Scene here between Wolf's Girl and Spinkter. So we're getting to see the secondary characters get some characterization and stuff. There we have another of my favourites here, Cannonballs. He argues with Mike Tyson over why Mike Tyson, who comes from the future, why he didn't bother warning them all about this stuff that is going on. Uh, I won't get into it again, but go back and look at my review of New Excellent Men 45. I talk about how all this essential sort of stuff, it wasn't being covered for years. Because Marvel had their priorities all wrong. Uh, New Excellent Men 45, go and watch it. And you'll understand part of the reason that this issue is very important. It is finally addressing important things. Uh, continuing that stuff with Retrograde. She's kind of the young rookie that they have in this story to voice the reader's point of view maybe. Uh, then we have got the best scene of the comic. Dr. X, he confronts that hard man and it is Kevin Bacon in disguise. I didn't know how, he's not that good an actor. He could never convince me he was someone else. But Michael Lucifer, he had a really good idea and a good grasp on Kevin Bacon. He positioned Kevin Bacon as like... The third wheel on the Dr. X and Mr. Magnet's paradigm. He is the one who is purely self-interested. He is only interested in exploiting muties and mutie politics for himself. 
he is selfish and greedy and here is that action scene. Dr. X shuts down the minds of Kevin Bacon's goons before they can attack him. Uh, really good stuff with Kevin Bacon though. The best thing done with the character. And we get to see some more of that in the Dr. X spin-off book that comes out a year or so after this one shot. Then we have a scene between the Smurf and Multiplication Man, which addresses another idea, and that is, why didn't they just have Multiplication Man repopulate the mutie race with his powers? He can make like a million copies of himself, and they can gun and shag women, and there can be loads of mutie babies born again. But the Smurf, he points out that that wouldn't save the mutie race because there wouldn't be enough genetic diversity. He doesn't really point out that it would eventually get all eugenics-y and inbreed -y. I do really like this period of excellent, man. It was eventually really well thought out and had some terrific momentum, Ganon, and some actual stakes. And also... Cyclist was banging Emma Frosties. Uh, here he does the classic cyclist move, which is buttoning up all his emotions and letting them out in an optic blast aimed at the sky. And then we have got a fantastic sequence between him and Wolfman. This is before they pathetically went the route of having them back at each other's throats. Or having Cyclist demonised to pop up Wolfman as the ethical superior. Here, they are just two hard friends depending on each other for support. And we end with a symbolic ending which is meant to make us feel hopeful. Because there is sun shining from beneath the clouds. It is mostly all talking and character stuff. But it is good. I probably didn't recommend this if you have no intention of following through and reading the enormous rich tapestry of excellent men stories that follow. But I enjoy it. I rate it seven thumbs up.